welcome to another Nixie Clock video. I'm a bit late to the Nixie party. This however is a bit different. I've designed this to run on using a 5 volt USB power supply or a 12 volt uh, wall adapter. It has a light sensor, a temperature, humidity and barometric pressure sensor uh, and a motion sensor and of course it has a NTP time sync. It runs on an Arduino Nano 33 IoT. Um, it's Wi-Fi enabled. I've created a web UI that allows you to control many functions using a web browser. The Nixie driver is a HP 5530. The HP PSU module is controlled by a Texas Instruments UCC3803. Everything about this Nixie clock is modular meaning I will be making other versions and the parts are interta uh, interchangeable. Things like the PSU, light, motion, power socket, colon LEDs and power socket are all removable. The purpose of the PIR and light sensors is to provide automatic dimming and turning off at night and to turn off the Nixies when no one is in the room. It took me a while to design and make this. I've been working on this on and off for over a year. I've gone through many revisions and failures. I've got hundreds of PCBs spares as a result. My very first design was based on transistors uh, driving the Nexus. This worked very well on a breadboard, but I had severe ghosting issues on the PCB prototype. Hence why I switched over to the HB5530. So here are some of the PCBs. Um, so we have the different um, Arduino board module. So the Arduino goes here and there's a DS3231 chip on here and it mounts onto the back of the Nixie board. I've gone through different versions of the power supply so this can take both 5 volts or 12 volts and create um, up to 200 volts um, there's another version of the um, Arduino board, much smaller. This is actually one of the final designs. I've been testing with different inductors to increase efficiency. Um, these little boards are... So these are the um, PIR modules, different designs for different Nixie clocks. these little boards for the LED colons. As you can see on here, the colons are actually LEDs and different um, colon LED boards for different clocks. You've got different USB power boards. Um, there's another version of it. There's, there's another version where it takes a 12 port uh, DC adapter and some of the um, PCBs aren't made yet. This is the power supply PCB. And this is the Arduino board. This is the 1 and 12 uh, Nixie uh, board. This one here is the um, 1 in 18 which is what's in here. And this is one of the completed 1 and 12 boards. Um, they do have variable resistors here for controlling the, um, the uh, anode current. And this is how all the, the modular devices connect. So for example if I take the Arduino board um, it simply slots in here Arduino mounts here and the power supply this one over here simply pops in there um, everything is interconnected using cables um, where it's not connected by headers And this is what the um, 
one in 18 board looks like. As you can see, the HP5530 chips. I'll be making PCBs for other Nixies. So here we have a um, one in 16, a one in four, a one and one, one in 17. This will make a really small clock. And I've got different flavors of these um, one in eight. This is a fine grid one. I've got others which I seem to have misplaced. I need to find them. Now let's take a look at the actual completed Nixie clock. So yep, so made from uh, Wenge wood from the Congo. Um, I have made other cases using different wood like oak, um, ash and so on. So on the front you have the um, three LED buttons which are controllable so you can turn the LEDs off or dim them. You've got a PIR motion, motion sensor got a um, VML uh, 7700 light sensor there and on the back you have a USB input as well as a 12 volt DC input so things like the LED modules pop out at the moment I've removed some of the screws so this will actually pop out and take a look inside. Try not to give myself a shock. So there's your HP power module. Um, nearly touched it. It was actually live. Um, there's your inductor. There's the Arduino with a battery backup for the RTC. And you have all the uh, cabling for all the switches and a BME 280, which is hidden way there at the bottom. So let's take a look at the um, web UI. Let's put this back. So when you first switch this on, um, it creates its own SSID, um, which you can then connect to. So it creates an access point and connect to the SSID. And then you can configure it um, and set your own Wi-Fi um, or connect it to your Wi-Fi. So if I just power cycle it, At the moment it's connected to my Wi-Fi so it will display, that's the version number. It then connects to the Wi-Fi and there's the IP address 192.168.4.1. So if I navigate to the web browser, so there's the um, internal access point so I'm going to connect to Nixie Clock. password is Nixie Clock. So it's connected. And then if I navigate to 4.1. So at the moment actually it isn't connected to my Wi-Fi but if I needed to I can just simply put my SSID and password in and hit connect and it will um, connect. So it's, these are some of the settings you can set. So if I go into settings you can change the hourly spins. This is just to um, reduce the cathode poisoning. So this is something I probably will change over time. You can adjust the brightness. So if I go from 255 to 101 you can see it's gone dimmer. If I reduce it even more all the way down and put it back to 255 there you go back to normal um, you can turn the display off uh, you can adjust the LED colon LED brightness there you go, it's much brighter now um, you can also adjust the um, three LEDs on the switches so I can make the blue LED super bright 
or the green LED. Okay, then we have the sensors. Here you can get it to display the temperature, it is warm in here, the humidity and barometric pressure. You can dis disable the PIR sensor, so the motion sensor turns the display on when you're in the room. You can also set the light sensor level, so you could configure it to um, at night time, turn it off. Um, when the light level is low enough, so if you're sleeping you don't want the Nixie to be on, you can also disable the light sensor. You can adjust the date time from the web UI. So you can do a manual NTP sync, disable NTP sync, set the date and time, set the on off hour, so you might want to make sure it wakes up at a certain time. Um, set the UTC off offset and tell it where to sync. Um, what NTP pool to use for the time sync. You can configure the power options if you're running on 12 volt DC or USB. And there's silly things like being able to change the font on the web UI and the background. And you can also name your clock. All the schematics are provided on the Easy EDA project page. So I'll just quickly go over some of the schematics. So this is the um, PSU uh, circuit that can boost 5 volts up to um, 200 volts. Um, it's adjustable. I put a uh, potentiometer here that allows you to go, I think you can go above 200 volts. So according to the original author of the um, circuit, so um, the design has been copied from surf and circuits.com the link is provided here I've made some few modifications to it um, like I've added an opto isolator um, for, to connect the Arduino to it to turn uh, the, the chip on, on or off to control the high voltage um, according to the original author of this design um, it should be able to do 50 milliamps without generating much heat now I've been getting quite a bit of heat on it depending on how much I draw but that could be due to the layout of the components or the orientation of the inductor um, I might redesign the PCBs and so on that's the whole beauty of it, it's all modular so this is all subject to change so the, the um, PCB track layout 3D view made it as compact as possible and kept components mostly to one side and uh, to provide a heat sinking area. So if you were running smaller Nixies you wouldn't need a heat sink and this could be redesigned to be much smaller. And this is the schematic for the Nano 33. So this this board actually shares um the same space as the boost converter, so it converts 5 volts to 12 volts, which is needed by HV 5530 um, high voltage um, uh, sh shift up, uh, chip. I can't remember what it's called. Um, so let's have a look at the PCB again, it's very compact, and the 3D view. So I put things like headers in that allows you to remove like the temperature sensor, locate it somewhere else if it's needed. The problem of having the temperature sensor inside the clock is it can get a bit, can get a bit warm, which then gives you misleading readings. So yeah, if you use twisted wire, you should be able to run it outside the clock. Components on both sides, the um, JST connectors are for the switches and this one here is the power supply and this is the the um, the Nixie board um, the two main components being the HB5530 ICs all the, um, the routing for the, the traces are kept as short as possible 
in the 3D view. Again, this head is here for things like the VML 7700 light sensor. And the code is also available on GitHub. Um, it is subject to change. The code isn't perfect. Um, there are still various settings that I probably need to change. Um, things like the PIR sensor. Um, I have to apply quite a bit of logic to it to get it to work. Because obviously things like the PIR sensor conflict will conflict with the light sensor or the on off schedule so these things have to be worked out I've done other similar code to this like I've made a LED clock, LED matrix clock which is one of my previous videos a couple of years ago or functionality like that has, has, I've got it working before it's, this code here is a bit more complex um, I've refactored the, my original code, it was on one page, but then I realised it's getting ridiculously long. So I've separated it out into separate CPP and H files um, for certain functions, like the fade function is in a separate file, global settings separate file, high voltage separate files, like Wi-Fi is the biggest file, it's all um, tons and tons of HTML. Um, but yeah, we'll keep all separate, otherwise it gets messy. Um, so there's a lot of pointers in here. So if you're looking at it for the first time, you're going to see a ton of pointers that references other files or other functions and so on. There's a lot of private and public um, variables and functions. So um, yeah, it's 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 I haven't had any problems with it. Um, I just need to just tidy up a bit more maybe, maybe add a few more comments in there. I've tried to add comments, you can you'll find tons and tons of comments. Some areas don't have it, like here. So yeah, I'll probably add more comments.